Come on. Hey, if, uh, if you're watching online, I got to tell you something. It might, it might seem like um, I'm here all, all by myself, but I'm actually in this house with uh, a bunch of crazy, cool, amazing um, Sierra Valvo Center weirdos. Can everybody, just, everybody that's here just shout so they know I'm not li- lying right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's up? What's up? I, I, ben, did you have the mic on? Could, could they hear that okay? Could they hear that, Michael? Yeah, awesome. Could you guys hear that? Put it in the comments. You wish you were here, don't you? But listen, I'm glad you stayed home. I'm glad you're safe. Uh, don't want anyone slipping around. It is slippery. It is slippery out there. Um, and so, uh, but I made it. Uh, thank God uh, I, I've got a Hummer. So that, that's awesome. I've got a bright yellow Hummer with my picture on the side of it. So that's good. I'm totally kidding. I'm, I'm just making, making that up. Guys, uh, this is going to be good. How, how many of you guys enjoyed uh, Melanie Antonucci's worship this morning? Wasn't that awesome? Just like this real special intimate time uh, of worship here uh, at, at, at SRC. Uh, and it is funny that we're actually, we kind of scaled down to one service today because just in a couple of weeks, we're going to three services. Isn't that crazy? It, it, it doesn't seem believable when Pastor Anthony's like, we've got a hundred people coming to our new, ca- you know, our newcomers luncheon, you know, and there's 15 people here, you know, right, 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 right now. But I wouldn't say 228. Say, say it out loud, 228. Okay, so that's February 28th, and 28 is interesting. Um, I, I was annoying uh, Pastor Anthony last night over text messages, sending him all these, all these different um, uh, 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 stats. And I said, because I, I, was, I was on Instagram, which I've been known to do, and there was this, uh, this graphic that came up. And the graphic that came up was a quote from C.S. Lewis. And, um, uh, and the quote was, look for Christ... And you'll find him, and with him, everything else. And then there was a number, a page number, 228. And it just came up on my Instagram. I said, I sent it to Anthony. I said, 228, bro. I said, the number 28 derives part of its meaning from the fact that it is the product of seven, a biblically perfect number, and four. Are you guys ready for this? There are 28 writers of the Old Testament. Also, the phrase, the lamb, used to refer to Jesus Christ as the lamb, that takes away the sins of the world, it occurs 28 times in scripture. The book of Acts with its, has 28 chapters, making it the longest uh, book in the New Testament. So 20, the perfect number, seven times four. Anyways, the point is this, a lot of glory on that third service, okay? That, that's, the, that's, the, that's the point. Third service, a lot of glory. What about the 9 and 11? Well, they always got a lot of glory too. So no matter what service you come to, uh, there's going to be a lot of glory. Awesome. A lot of glory going on. All right, guys. If you got your Bibles, turn with me. We're going to go to um, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 7. We're going to be looking at verses 25 um, to 40. And this is funny to me um, because it's Valentine's Day and we're going to be talking about singleness and the kingdom of God. So you, I, again, you couldn't, you couldn't plan this, and we certainly did not plan this, but it's Valentine's Day, it's Couples Day, it's Love Day, and we're going to be talking about um, singleness and the kingdom of God. And I'm going to be reading this um, out of the Passion Translation. How many of you guys got the um, uh, Brian Simmons Passion Translation? Awesome, awesome. Now, if you don't, if you got your phone, if you got the Bible Gateway app, in fact, most of the Bible apps include the Passion Translation. And uh, Brian, what he actually did is um, uh, he went through the Greek and the, and the Hebrew. And so um, uh, it's almost like a real-time commentary of the Word of God. So I like it. It's a paraphrase translation. And I like it because um, he's not imposing anything on the Word of God. He's, he's um, expounding on. And I also like it uh, just as far as how he addresses this, this text. I found it incredibly helpful. Now, um, not, not, everybody, not everybody thinks that I should be teaching from the Passion tra- Translation. Um, I once got a, uh, a text message, quite, you know, a, a, message, a me- messenger, so anybody can send you a direct message. And, uh, and, and, and this, this young man was <laughs> quite disappointed with me and also um, quite high. 
and um, not in the most high, okay? And you're like, oh, how do you, don't accuse someone of being, no, no, he sent me a picture of, of his jar full of weed. And, and, and he, was, he was disappointed with me that, that I would, like, he was accusing me of selling out. He's like, you've sold out, bro. And I was like, you know, again, only in Seattle, okay? If you're not, <laughs> if you're not in Seattle, you might not. Uh, okay, so anyways, I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? I, I responded. I usually don't. But what are you talking about? I sold out, right? He said, um, he goes, you used to preach out of the ESV, and now you preach out of the Passion Translation. You sold out. Um, so anyways, yeah, I, I, I've gotten old. <laughs> I sold out, and today we're going to be uh, studying this um, out of the Passion Translation. All right, here we go. You guys ready? Just somebody go, woo. You guys ready? Woo. Good, good, good. All right. Now let me address the issue of singleness. I must confess, I have no command to give you that comes directly from the Lord. So this is what Paul is saying here. He's saying, let's talk about singleness. And just so you know, we're going to be talking about some things here. Okay. And, um, and these are not commands. Okay. This is just, this is wisdom from Apostle Paul. And he says, but let me share my thoughts on this matter as coming from one who has experienced the mercy of the Lord to keep me faithful to him. Verse 26, because of the severe pressure we are in, I recommend that you remain as you are. If you're married, stay in marriage. If you're a single, don't rush into marriage. And, and that's, that's just, a, we'll just pause right there for a second. Listen now, if you're single, don't rush into marriage we take the time needed to make sure that we are prepared okay um in the same way that you like that new recruits right like when you're uh when you join the army um you go through basic training to make sure that you're ready for war um before you get married make sure that you get some basic training so that you're ready for war and not ready to fight against each other, but ready to fight for each other as allies against the powers of darkness. Amen. All right. And it says here, um, uh, verse 27, if you're married, uh, don't rush into marriage. 28. But if you do get married, you haven't sinned. It's just that I would want to spare you the problems you'll face with the extra challenges of being married. <laughs> Good times. All right, no comment. There we go. Verse 29. I, I love, um, I, I'll just say this right off the bat. Marriage is the best. Thing. And if, anybody that knows me, my mom's in the service and, and Keith's in the service here. But anybody that knows me, marriage is the best thing that ever happened to me. So um, I'll just say that right off the bat. My friends, what I mean is this. The urgency of our times means that from now on, those who have wives should live as though without them. And those who weep should forget their tears. And those who rejoice will have no time to celebrate. And those who purchase items will have no time to enjoy them. We are to live as those who live in the world system but are not absorbed by it. For the world as we know it is quickly passing away. Because of this, we need to live as free from anxiety as possible. For a single man is focused on the things of the Lord and how he may please uh, him. Unless you're a single man at SRC, he's focused on one thing. Woman, woman, woman. I'm just kidding. We'll just stay focused. Here. Um, like, who, who is this Paul? For the single man thinks nothing except for the Lord Jesus Christ. Like, Paul, dude, that's, you're, you're the weird duck in this one. You know, it's like, you know, no, most single men are just like, lady. You know, all right. Here we go. Verse 33. But a man. <laughs> but a married man is pulled in two directions, for he is concerned about both the things of God and the things of the world in order to please his wife. And the single woman is focused on the things of the Lord so that she can be holy both in body and spirit. But a married woman is concerned about the things of the world and how she may please her husband. I am trying to help you and make things easier for you and not make things difficult. But so that you would have undistracted devotion. Everyone say undistracted, undistracted devotion. Good. Serving the Lord constantly with an undivided heart. Everybody say undivided heart. Isn't that good? That's such great word choice. 
Verse 36, however, if a man has decided to serve God as a single person, yet changes his mind and finds himself in love with a woman, when a man loves a woman, although he never intended to marry, go ahead and let him get married. It's not a sin. All right, Paul, thanks. Verse 37, and on the other hand, if a man stands firm in his heart to remain single, when a man doesn't love a woman, okay, he's under no compulsion to get married, but he has control over his passions and is determined to remain celibate. He has chosen well. So then, the one who marries his fiance does well, and the one who chooses not to marry has done even better. <laughs> Verse 39. A wife is bound by the marriage covenant as long as her husband is living. But if the husband dies, she is free to marry again as she desires. But of course, he should be a believer in the Lord. However, in my opinion, I think I too have the spirit of God. She would be happier if she remained single. The reading of the word. We better pray. Jesus, <laughs> we give you this time. Happy Valentine's Day. We ask that your presence would be in the midst of us. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in Seattle, Washington. Thank you for what you're doing in the Pacific Northwest. Thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. And Spirit of God, we invite you to crash everybody's pad that's watching this right now. Spirit of God, we invite you to even uh, invade people's cars as they're driving, knowing that people are going to watch this even in the future, in the year uh, 2022, 2025, that no matter whenever people find this message, Jesus, I pray that you would find them and they would find you. So Lord, we invite you into this room. We invite you into our hearts. We invite you into our atmosphere. We say, come Jesus, have your way. <laughs> Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We know that's your will. In Jesus' name, everybody said Amen and amen and amen. All right, first of all, this is what Paul says. He says, to all, to all the single ladies, all, all, right, all right, good time. All right, to, to all the single guys, to all the singles, yo, 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 the pressure is real. Look at verse 26. Because of the severe pressure we are in, I recommend that, uh, uh, that you remain the way you are. Um, I remember this commercial and uh, in the commercial, um, and I think, it, I think it was a band commercial or something, um, but Anthony, can I give this to you to, to sync it with? Uh, but in this commercial, this, this lady's in labor, and she's pushing. She's like, push. Oh, she's like, okay, push. And then all of a sudden, the baby comes shooting out, um, uh, comes shooting out, but, you know, out between her legs, but the doctor doesn't catch the baby. The baby goes flying at high speeds, breaks through the window, and this baby's just flying. And the baby's like crying, but then all of a sudden the baby starts growing. And the baby gets older and older, and the baby's flying through the air, uh, all the way to the point that, that the baby's maturing and maturing, and just it's so, so, so fast. Finally, the baby's like no longer a baby. Now it's an old man, and he's like, Arr! and he flies all the way, and then there's like this um, grave, and the baby flies into, the, like, he's not a grave, it's an old man now, flies into the into the into the grave bam and there's a tombstone and he's dead and it says life is short like that was that and, and it was just like in, in, a, in a bum anybody that was young just got instantly totally um bummed out by that commercial and the point is that life is super quick this thing is going super super fast and it's and it's super super weird to see that kind of media where you get to see people hey, how many of you have ever been on youtube and you actually watch the videos of people like maturing from children all the way into the point of of old age and um uh, and you just get to watch that mature and you're like oh my goodness and then there's this thought like i am going to get old you know and so let's fight it, right? Like, be smart, get out of debt, invest well, so you can get lots of plastic surgery. So anyways, um, but like, like in, 
with that, like, and when you're young, you feel a pressure with that because there's this pressure that at a certain age, you need to be at a certain um, class, you need to have a certain, you need to have certain finances. You, you, at a certain age, man, I, I'm going to be married by this age. I'm going to have children. And I don't know if, if you're watching online and you're a planner. How many of you are planners and you've got a timeline of your life and you're like, at this point in time, and you're just kind of like just strategically aligning the plan and all of a sudden you get past a certain age and you're not married in fact you're not even dating and, all, and, you're, and, and you just feel all, um, all, all, all of this, this pressure you guys the very first thing that we need to do within the kingdom this is what Paul is saying here is he says listen I know that there's a lot of pressure keep reading look at verse 31 guys look in your Bibles it says we are to live as those who live in the world but not absorbed by it not absorbed by the world's timelines yeah and it says for the world as we know it is quickly passing away. Look at verse 32. Because of this, we need to live as free from anxiety as possible. In the kingdom of God, we need to discern the pressure. Just declare it with me right now. Discern the pressure. Because when you're single, there can be a programming of the world. And it is subconscious. Meaning it's, it's, it's running, this pressure is running on a software level. It's running in the background. Subconscious meaning under your consciousness. It's, you're not even aware of where this stuff is coming from, but we get programmed by the programming of the world. This is why uh, Paul would say it, um, Romans 12 too, to not be conformed to this world, yeah, but be transformed yeah, by the renewing of our mind, by the testing, you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable. Listen, whether you're single, whether you're uh, uh, wishing that you're single, uh, uh, no matter what your status, no matter what your economic status is, that uh, the area of relationships is not the only area that the enemy comes to exploit us. But number one, in this time, in this season, in 2021, we need to, with the Holy Spirit's help, discern the pressure. Okay, listen, the enemy can't make you sin. Uh, he, can, he, can, he can lead you into temptation, but he cannot make you sin. But he certainly can use pressure. And if we don't discern the pressure, a lot of times we will actually feel like we're compromised, but we haven't even sinned. We'll, we'll feel like we've sinned we'll, be, because of the, the, the temptation. And a lot of times we just think that the programming is just us. And I, and I have nothing against counselors. Like, I, I, love, I love counselors. But sometimes counselors come to bring counsel to us to work through a process that's not even necessarily our own process. I've met with people before, and, and, and there's so much guilt. And I'll say, well, wait, have you given in to the temptation? No, I haven't given in to the temptation. Listen, you haven't sinned. The enemy's trying to, to bring this, this pressure to get you to do what? To get you to believe a lie about who you are. At Sierra Bible Center, we have a mission. And our mission is to see people awakened to their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. Do you guys know that the enemy also has a mission? That the enemy of your soul also has a mission. His mission is to lie, kill, to do everything possible to get us to believe a lie. I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. When I was in Texas hanging out with uh, Troy Brewer, that this Troy, he's got like a, a snake killing anointing. This guy just kills. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I'm going to be releasing a podcast pretty soon, and he's going to tell this story. Now, he tells this story on the podcast, but I'll tell you what. Sitting at a campfire at about 2 a.m. Uh, in his backyard and hearing him tell a story at a campfire, a thousand times better than he did on my, on my podcast, Okay. You know, I mean, we're sitting there. He's talking about the first time he went to Uganda. And he's in, his, um, he's in his hotel room with his bride. And he opens up a, a cupboard. And when he opens up this cupboard, there's a cobra, you guys, in the, in the cupboard. It goes, and he, and he slams the cupboard shut. He opens up another cupboard, gets a bunch of plates. And he rips the thing open. And he just starts throwing 
plates at a king cobra. He just goes like pure adrenaline, full on Texas. I'll tell you what, if, if, if he had been from Seattle, we would have closed the door and went down to the lobby area and asked for a different room, right? I'd be like, okay, not cool, man, not, say, I'm not paying for this, play, right? I'd, get me out. I'd be emailing Priceline, like, there would be non-pastoral words coming out of my mouth, but, but if you're from Texas, he rips it open, he starts throwing, guys, he kills a king cobra, a snake, he goes to bed, he's trying to sleep, but his adrenaline is just, he, he cannot calm down. Then the Lord speaks to him and says, there's a second snake in your room. He wakes up Leanne, he says, hey babe, listen, I don't want you to freak out, but I think the Lord just told me there's a second snake in our room, and I think it's up in this one cabinet at head level. And so they get up, he goes and he, and he opens it up, and sure enough, there's a second cobra in his room. And so, again, he gets all these plates, and he kills, okay, second, all right, when he opens this one, it spits at him, like, full on, just, and the spit, they're supposed to hit you in the eyes, it hit him in the chest. And, um, it, but he killed that second, well, okay, so it turns out he ends up going to um, this revival meeting, and, uh, and, and the witch doctor shows up, he's the big guy, and he says, you're not supposed to be alive. I was told by, this, by the water spirits, by the underwater water, that I was supposed to kill you. I sent two cobras in your room to kill you. Why are you not dead? Okay, um, he's just got this snake killing anointing, which is like super cool, especially if, you, if you're doing campfires with him, right? You're just telling all, but like, yeah, you know, and so he tells you story. He'll be out in the, on his property, and the Lord will say, snake, and he'll just pull out his gun and, sh- and, and, shoot, and shoot these snakes. And this is, this is what he said. This is, this is where I'm getting at right now. He said, a snake is just a mouth. He said, that's all a snake is, is, is a mouth. And that's all the enemy is, is a mouth. And the enemy comes to use its mouth to get us to believe a set in series of lies subconsciously so that our software gets violated. There's a virus in our software telling us information that does not line up with the word of God. This is why we're going through the book of 1 Corinthians. This is why week after week, we at Seattle Revival, it's not very revival to, to just read, you know, you know, if you were to read this in the NIV, you know, there'd be words like, to the virgins on Valentine's Day. I, like, like, like it doesn't seem very like revival, the very Holy Spirit to be reading a passage to the virgins, right? Like just, let's just release some Shabbat Let's release the band. Let's, let's, you know, and now listen, how do you know that you're in a real move of God? Because there is a love and a conviction to dive into his living, infallible, unchangeable word. How do you know that the Holy Spirit is actually inside of you? Because you're falling more in love with the word of God it's like it, it begins to take root down deep within you um, I, I was watching a, a message last night a very famous preacher that I've heard a lot of good things about and so I thought hey <laughs> I'm in the bathtub let's watch a YouTube video All right. and so I'm watching this um, too much information watching this pastor you know preaching his word I, I watched it for 30 minutes and never once was the Bible opened never once was there a verse read never once did we get to hear the name Jesus? That is wrong. I've got one job as a pastor, and that is to talk about Jesus. That is to reveal Jesus. I have one job, and that's to say, hey, I don't care how it feels. I, I understand this doesn't feel right. I understand this isn't culturally correct. I understand this is not hip, but I've got to take you to the Word. I've got to take you to the Bible and to the singles, to, to, to the married couples. Well, let the Spirit of God come. Let His grace come to expose all demonic pressure that would love to get us to sabotage and to trade out our destiny for some porridge. Let the Holy Spirit come and so burn in your heart that there would be a conviction, a resolution that I will not compromise because my identity is worth it, because my destiny is worth it, because my legacy is worth it, because my children that I don't even have yet are worth it, because my grand 
grandchildren that I don't even have yet are worth it. That the future is worth engaging with the Word of God. That the future is worth your integrity. That the future is worth your courage. That the future is saying, I know this isn't cool, but I'm going to do it God's way. This is what revival looks like. It looks like a return to a place without compromise. It looks like to a, a return to the office of the prophet, which is black and white. What does the word say? What does the word say? I don't care what MTV says. I don't care what the hip pastors have to say. What does the word of God say? Because I value, I value his word. I value this living word. I value his heart. I value his presence. I actually value this community. I value the people I'm doing life with. And I know if I compromise, people will get hurt. And I know if I compromise, my children will be hurt. I know if I compromise my beliefs and my integrity, um, that, that the gospel will not be able to stand on a faulty, shifty, sandy foundation. He's inviting us back to the rock. Discern the pressure. Spot the mouth. Shoot the snake. God wants to expose every snake in your cabinets. He wants to expose every snake in your garden. He wants to expose every snake in your marriage. He wants to, to expose every snake in your mind. You should not ever find yourself talking and negotiating with a God really say jungle book thrust. <laughs> no. Discern the snake. Shoot the snake. We discern the pressure. And then everyone read this with me. We displace the pressure. We discern it. And then we displace it. With what? What do we, what do we, with a renewed sense of urgency. Look at verse 29. Paul says, my friends, what I mean is the urgency of our times means that from now on, those who have wives should live as though they don't even have them. Not the best advice on Valentine's Day, right? Like to all the married dudes, pretend like you don't have a wife. <laughs> okay, that, that's, that, okay, that's not exactly what, what Paul is, is just neglect them. It's the last days, right? Like, no, that's not what Paul is saying here. Um, what he is saying is that within the kingdom, there should be a sense of urgency. And when you're reading Paul's words here, there's even a sense of dire urgency. And you'd say, well, Pastor Dan, that's because of like, um, the persecution. That's because of all the, um, that's because of, uh, 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 that's because of everything that's happening within, within the church. That, but actually, when, when the book of 1 Corinthians was written, this is in the mid-50s. So we are still about 20 years away from Nero's persecution and the burning of, of, of Jerusalem. What does that mean? That if you're a believer living in Corinth, you actually have it pretty good. If you're a believer living in Corinth, it's kind of like being a believer living in Bellevue. Oh, yeah. What's up? Hashtag Bellevue. What's up, everyone? Okay, awesome. Like, like, it's pretty good. Like, and can you imagine trying to bring this word to believers in Bellevue? Like, hey, guys. Hey, it's crazy. Things are getting crazy. And you're looking like, Pastor Dan, what are you talking about? It's not, it's not that bad. I mean, and, and, you know, unless you watch Newsmax, then it's worse, right? <laughs> you know, globalists, ah, right? Good times. <laughs> but like, but this is what Paul's saying. Guys, this, guys, 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 this is not good. This, this is, we, we got to be sober-minded. Guys, guys, guys. But in the natural, actually things look, things look good. So, Pastor Darren, where, 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 are you, where are you in on this? Well, I believe Paul's right. I believe, Sierra Bible Center. We got, we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to take today seriously. There should be a level of urgency. I, I know we've got cars. I know we've got homes. I know that a lot of us can pay our bills. I know that, 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 that we're doing well. But in the kingdom, there always has to be a sense of urgency. Why? Because Christ has not returned for his church yet. Therefore, we are still on a, a great commission assignment. Uh, uh, there are uh, cities and nations that have not been redeemed yet. Um, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, you definitely know that the, that the, the fullness of the kingdom of God has not yet been 
truly massaged into our region yet. This is what Paul says. Hey, guys, I know, I know you think you have forever, um, but you really, really don't. And if you're single, you need to examine your heart and say, hey, God, is there a grace on my life where, where I don't make relationship an idol? Is there a grace on my life where I can just go all in with this kingdom thing? Because Paul says, if there's a grace on your life to remain single, you should celebrate that grace and not go along with the worldly's with the world's programming that you have to get married that you have to have children that you should have children by now you should not allow any of the pressure from the world to tell you where you should be by now but you should stop listening and stop drinking of the wine of the world start drinking of the new wine of this glorious holy spirit that there would be a joyful fearlessness in you just like peter when they said bro are you are you drunk and he's like heck no it's only 9 (laughs) a.m that's an interesting answer and he's like i am just very very filled i am very intoxicated with the holy spirit the same peter that denied jesus three times is now standing on top of a buick preaching the gospel for all of these cities and nation people start turning from their sin this is what paul says discern the pressure displace the pressure don't make any decision and how do you do that you step into a sense of urgency urgency so that you realize that every day each and every day that the Lord has made he gives you a grace to rejoice in it no matter what your relational status is on Facebook you are the gift from God and he has created you for this unique time in history now listen the church and and the, the religious system has lied to us and said that you can't be used by God unless you're married that you can't be a pastor unless you're married you can't be a prophet or an evangelist unless you're married and listen if you've ever heard that thought you can just say hey for it is written first corinthians chapter 7 verses 25 to 40 it empowers me to be an apostle it empowers me to be a prophet it em- it empowers me to be used by god in my singleness therefore i can discern worldly pressure i can discern religious pressure which by the way is just as demonic as worldly pressure, yeah? That we can discern it, and we can displace it, and we can step into a sense of radical urgency. We are living in the last days. Jesus will return for his bride. He will come back riding on a white horse, and we will rule and reign with Christ Jesus bringing judgment, which is the justice of Jesus to this earth, to see it fully and completely restored to the original Edenic mandate and purpose of the Father. Until then, the Spirit of God is in, inside of us. There's a grace inside of us to begin pulling the future restoration of all things into the present that we can release the person and power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because his spirit has been seated inside of us, his glorious Holy Spirit. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, to put weird, manipulative, psychological pressure. You can't be used by God because you're single. You said you wouldn't be single at this time. And you can just say, no, 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 no. My life is in God's hands, in his hands I will trust I will wait I know that God's if if it's your desire to be married you can just say I know that God is preparing my spouse for me I know more importantly the Lord is preparing me for my spouse yep 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 I want to say discern the pressure displace the pressure and the last thing is this look at verse 35 it says I'm trying to help you and make things easier for you And not make things difficult, but so that you would have undistracted devotion, serving the Lord constantly with an undivided heart. This is what Paul said. Hey, I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to make things more difficult. It's so important in the days that we're living, guys, in 2021, that our devotion, our focus is not blurry 
and divided. He says, evaluate your commitment. Apply your heart. Look at this. Serve the Lord constantly and with an undivided heart. Hey, for all the singles. For all the singles. Sorry, I already did that. For all the singles. Put your hands up. Okay. You are in a season where you can step in by God's grace to undistracted devotion. If you're married, awesome. God bless you. You're in a season where the Lord is inviting you into a place where even though you're married, you have an undivided heart. And isn't this your prayer? I, this, this is my prayer. Lord, I don't want to be distracted in my devotion. I don't want to be chasing a bunch of kingdom stuff, but miss out on Jesus. I want to serve you, Lord, with an undivided heart. Discern the pressure, displace the pressure, and recalibrate your devotion. Are you in love with Jesus this morning? Are you in love with his spirit? Are you, are you falling more and more in love with the things of God each and every day? You know, I, I truly believe that we are either moving towards Christ in our devotion and our hunger for him or we're moving away from Jesus. And that's the question is today, are you, do you find yourself being drawn daily closer and closer do you feel that wooing in the spirit god i just i need you i want you reveal yourself to me or do you find yourself drifting away from jesus if you find yourself not really caring as much about the things of god hey the, no, no time like the present to repent, to turn away from, to, to recalibrate your heart. L listen, how does that happen? I'll tell you how it happens. Sometimes it's bad things. Sometimes it's evil things that capture our, our attention. And we give ourselves into temptation. And like we start, we just start doing things that we shouldn't, right? But sometimes it's not even that. Sometimes it's actually the good things. Like good things, like, like good responsibilities that, that like capture our, our passion. How do you, there's some good things in your life and they've captured your passion. Awesome, none of you. Um, but the problem is, is that we, we need to be careful because we can give our heart to something and without even realizing it, sometimes we can realize, wow, I've actually forgotten Jesus. I've actually put this good thing on the altar of my life, and I am being consumed by a good thing, but it's not Jesus himself. And this is what Paul says. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to make things easier for you. That you would have undistracted devotion, serving the Lord constantly with an undivided heart. Listen, if you're single today, you should not be seeking primarily after a dude. Okay? If you're single today, you should not be seeking primarily after, after a beautiful gal. You should be seeking after a gal that's not beautiful. And with that being said, let's, no, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> you see, that's the problem, is I think I'm funnier than what I actually am. And so you guys need to pray for me more. I could tell you guys are starting to, to tune out and you stop praying for me. No, no, no. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> this is what we should be seeking. Forgive me. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. This is what Jesus says. Seek first. Everyone say, seek first. Seek first. Seek first. Seek first. Hey, if you're married, awesome. Seek first. Hey, if you're single, awesome. Seek first. Hey, if you're poor, great. Seek first. Hey, if you're rich, great. Seek first. Hey, seek first. The kingdom. Are, are you depressed? Great. Don't seek joy. Seek first. The kingdom of God, yeah. If you're lonely, don't seek companionship. No, 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 no. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This ties in so beautifully with last week. We did a standalone message last week. We talked about the kingdom. We said the kingdom of God is Jesus. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is with us and in us. The kingdom of God is right now. Seek first Jesus and his righteousness. And what? All this other stuff will be added unto you. 
You lonely, seek first Jesus and his righteousness and all the companionship that you need will be added unto you. We don't seek companionship, we seek Jesus and his righteousness. Yeah, you depressed? Don't, don't try to find your inner joy, right? Don't, 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 don't get every book written by the Dalai Lama that you can find. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that, that will not help. That'll just teach you how to step into a place of apathy where you'd be like, you know, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> don't seek the Dalai Lama, please. Don't, don't seek Deepak Chopra, no. All of these things are, are, are lousy counterfeits. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first Jesus, Jesus, Jesus and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added. Unto, here's, here's what will happen. I just want to be married. Where's my unicorn? Where's my knight in shiny armor? Lord, I give this to you. I give this desire to you, Jesus. I love you. And your presence satisfies me. And if, even if he never comes on a horse to rescue me, I just trust you. And when you're not looking for the dude, right when you totally fall in love with Jesus, the dude will come and you'll be like, Really? Okay. That's what Jesus does. He is so good. He is so faithful. We seek first Jesus and his righteousness. Why does this matter? Because we can't afford to have an undivided heart right now. Why does this matter? Because we can't have compromised passion right now. Why does this matter? We can't afford idols right now. We can't. Our, our country can't afford. Listen, the church cannot afford compromise right now. Why? Because God is building an army. Jesus is building an army in the Pacific Northwest, and the church is going to look radically different than it looked two years ago. The church in 2021 already looks radically different than the church in 2020. There's a shift, you guys, and it's not coming. The shift has occurred. There's a militancy in the spirit right now where our resolution matters. Our passion matters. He is building an army and, and he's, and why? Because it's all about the king. It's all about the kingdom. And you can't have a king and you can't have a kingdom without an army. He's building something. He is doing something. And that's why your heart matters. That's why your passion matters. That's why your worship matters. Here's where we're going at Sarah Vile Center. We're building an army. All of our members, we're, we're training up all of our members right now in, in, uh, in deliverance. That's why we're doing a deliverance night um, tomorrow night. Not so that I can be doing deliverance, but so that our, our, our ministers, our members at SRC, they get to do this stuff. And then we get to coach them and work with them. And then what are we doing next month in, in March? We're going to train all of our members how to do inner healing. Um, Pastor Tom and Sozo, they're coming back. We're going to be working through the Sozo book by Donna De Silva. And, and we'll be doing all of our members trained up how to do deliverance and inner healing. Why? Because we're building up an army. And I've lived in Seattle long enough to know that Seattle needs a lot of deliverance and a lot of inner healing. We're going to need an army. Why? There's not enough pastors. There's not enough churches. There's not enough stages. There's not enough microphones. We need the body of Christ. Paul would say we're a body. Many members, different gifts, different purposes. But it's time. It's time. Just declare right now, it's time. It's time. And if you're watching online, I don't know where you're watching from, what region, what state, what, what nation, but now is not the time to be like, God's done with the church. Now is not the time to be like, I'm never going back to the church again. Now is not the time to say, ah, oh, pastors suck. Listen, I understand. I used to be there myself. Now is the time to let not your heart be divided and to not let the hurts of the past be the filters by which you disqualify God's plan and purpose for your life. Now's the time to stink and engage. Now's the time to get back in the game. Now's the time to forgive again. Now's the time to love again. Now's the time to say, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So that's why a message like this is radically powerful. Not necessarily because you need it right now, but so that he can load it in your heart like a magazine. So that when you are discipling young men and young women, and they are about to make an unwise marital choice because of worldly programming and pressure that they are under that says, by 27, I said I'd be married. Man, forget that. Forget what the culture says. Forget what your, what your relationship goals said. That you can say, no, 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 in God I stink and trust. 
I don't need a religious system telling me how I'm going to live my life. I don't need the world system telling me how I'm going to live my life. I need the word of God and the glorious Holy Spirit partnering in intimacy with the glory of God that in him I trust. I will make a wise choice because of the spirit of wisdom, wah, 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 that is residing with me. But I'm so lonely. No, 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 no. That's a lie that you have believed. Why? His word said he'd never leave you or forsake you. You've got, you've got some pretty amazing people all up in you. The Father, the Son, the Spirit, the great cloud of witnesses cheering you on from above. You can do this. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. We need you in the army. We, we don't need you in the, in, 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 uh, being rescued by medics in two years from now. I wish I would have known. No, you know. You know the truth. And it's the truth that will set you free. Okay, this is what I want to do. Glenn, did you get that word, that prophetic word sent to you? This is going to be cool. This is different. Everything's different. We got snowed out. We got some people here. But man, the Lord highlighted this word this last week that, that Charlie Champ gave when he was with us, last time he was with us. He released a word for, for SRC. And I feel like, man, it's time to take that word back out and to steward the word. Because I feel, it, it, man, it lines right up with this word today to not have a divided heart, to not have a compromised passion. And so if you're watching online, we're going to play this prophetic word um, from Charlie Shamp. And then when we're done, I'm going to come back up and I'm just going to lead us in a word of prayer. And I'm going to pray that there'd be a militancy in the spirit that would come upon you, that you would put on the full armor of God so that in this urgent time, you would not take on the world's worldly belief of that you got to play some sort of role and meet up to some sort of weird expectation, but that there would be a militancy released in your spirit and urgency, knowing that he's calling for you to live radically different because of the days and times in which we are living you guys ready all right let's go and roll it I see an army I see an open heaven I see angels descending there are more that are with us there are more that are for us there's a force an army that is coming out of the Northwest. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I hear the sound of the marching of boots in the streets. I hear the sound of the army of God. I hear the sound of those that see salvation in the streets. I see, I see an army arising that march forth, that do not break rank, but continue to march forward and continue to preach the word of the Lord. I see an army arising that carry the sword of the Lord. I see the, the army with the shield of faith that have not put down the shields, have not taken off the armor, but have put on the armor for such a time as this, for such an armor and such a time as this, the armor of the Lord has been placed even upon your shoulders, says the Lord. For there is a, a government, an expansion that I've placed upon this ministry, upon you, SRC, upon this place, an expansion of government that whatever you say shall be, what you have prophesied shall come to pass. For in the midst of chaos, in the midst of turmoil, you did not back down, you did not rest, you did not put down the armor, but you took upon yourself the very burden of the Lord and went to the front line. And for this reason, I have placed a new governmental mantle upon you. Not just for the city, but even for the Northwest. For I've placed upon your shoulders a governmental anointing. Oh, when you see it, you say, but this is only a child. This is only a small thing. 
But the Lord says, do not look and say, this is a small thing, for it is not a small thing. For this is Emmanuel, God with you. For I have been with you in the midst of chaos. I have been with you in the midst of turmoil. I have been with you in the midst of this season. I did not forget you. I stood with you. And as you stood with me, and we've stood together, you shall see what I will do in this new year. What I will do will baffle the minds of even those that are in the natural government in the state says the Lord for they will look and they will say this is impossible how did this take place but the Lord says it was because you stood in the midst of chaos because you did not back down says the Lord and you would not bow your knee to the natural government I will release my government upon you I will release Emmanuel and he will show forth in your midst I will show great wonders, says the Lord, in your midst. I will show great miracles in your midst. What you have seen in the past will be in nothing in comparison for what you are about to be, be, be in and what you are about to see. For there is a new breath of life that I am breathing upon you. I am breathing my breath and where you thought you could take yourself. And you said, Lord, I do not have the strength to carry on any longer. I will take you not by might, not by power, but by my breath, says the Lord. And I will breathe upon this ministry something fresh, something new, something that you have not seen nor fathomed even in your heart. It will be a work that I have placed in you. Even while there was chaos and turmoil, I was putting it in you. I was placing it in you. In the midst of the toughness, in the midst of the dryness, in the midst of the difficulty, that was the moment that you were birthing it through. And as you stand in this new year, as you walk into this new year, this child shall grow this anointing shall grow this glory shall grow and you will see what I put and released through you and it will be undeniable it will be undeniable what will be done a new dimension a new glory I see an army. And it'll be undeniable. A new dimension and a new glory. Hey, let's stand. You guys just want to just pray for a second? Jesus, come. We just invite you. We invite your presence. We honor, Lord. We honor the good news of your kingdom. We honor your righteousness. We honor your peace. We honor your joy. We honor this season, God. We honor your ways, God. We say your ways are higher than our ways, God. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word, God. Lord, we ask that your spirit would come and examine our hearts, Father. Lord, that we would turn away from any distraction, God. Lord, that we would, that we would spot those good things, God, that have occupied the throne of our soul. And Lord, we, we give thanks for the good things, but Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would be our only God, that you would be our only Savior, that you would be our, our numero uno. That you would be our, our number one, God. We, Lord, we repent of idolatry, God. We, we repent of becoming more passionate about the things of God than even God himself. We repent for even being more passionate for new revelation and losing our passion for the king of revelation, Christ Jesus. 
Lord, we thank you for everything that you have in store for us at Seattle Revival Center. Lord, at the end of the day, Lord, we don't seek first healing. We don't seek first deliverance. We don't seek first manifestations of glory. We seek first Christ Jesus and his righteousness. Lord, it is you that we seek. Jesus, it is you that we seek. We seek you first and your kingdom. Knowing that all these other things, these all, all these other things, they're all good. They're all good. But God, they're not you. <laughs> we seek you first. And all these other things will give thanks to you. But we will not worship these other things. We worship you, Jesus. It is you we worship, Jesus. We don't worship growth. We don't worship numbers. We don't worship our finances. It is you that we seek, God. It is you. We don't worship a promotion. We don't worship an honor, wanting to be honored at work or honored by our friends or wanting to be honored by our children. Lord, we honor you. We honor your face. We honor your fame, God. We love you. <laughs> we love your presence. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you have in store for us. I'll share with you real quickly. I was chatting with Charlie this last week. And he said, I was just thinking about the dream that I had about you guys. The dream that he had just before he giving this word here at SRC. He said, I'm just remembering the smile on your face. He said, I don't think I've ever seen you so happy. He said, you were just beside yourself. At everything that Jesus was doing at Seattle Bible Center. He said, in the dream, it was March of 2021. He said, I was just beside myself. Everything that the Lord was doing in the spring of 2021. And then that's when the Lord was like, you need to go back and listen to the prophetic word that he released here um, about what was coming for SRC. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, de abasoro, koshiri, abasoro, kiri, asara, ya, kiri, asaya. Yeah, 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 Jesus. 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 We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. I'd like to pray for a couple of you. I can't really move around. We don't have cameramen today. Um, so, uh, if, if you want to stay where you're at, I just, just, just do this. Like, I'll stay here because I want to respect where you're at. Um, but if you want to come on up, I can pray for you right, 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 right up here as well, which is, I don't want you to be embarrassed. And then we've got whatever. But uh, uh, Carrie and Greta, can I pray for you guys? Are you, right? you guys want to come up or stay where you're at? All right, come on. Let's just applaud them as they're coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now everyone at, at home is like, oh, I should have went today. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You guys, these guys are engaged to be married. Isn't that awesome? Come on, bud. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It's got a beautiful, beautiful ring. Uh, guys, go and just stretch out your hands. I want to bless these guys. Yeah, thank you, Lord. You guys, just go and put out your hands in receiving posture. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for your grace on their lives. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that in this season, they're saying, God, in this, Lord, we're going to seek you and your righteousness, knowing that all these other things are going to be added unto us, Lord. Father, I honor Greta. Lord, I honor her timeline, her storyline. Father, I honor the call of God on, on her. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that there is like a prophetess thing on her, Lord. I thank you that she does hear your voice. There is a black and white, um, and uh, uh, call on on her she does not like compromise that there are things that really really bother her there are things that really make her angry there are things that really irk her there's things where she just goes oh it's not that's not right this is not good and uh and Greta I just see that the enemy has tried to make you feel powerless and he's tried to do various things to disqualify you and just to say that that's just whatever that's just your personality but it's not your personality this is the spirit of Christ Jesus that is inside of you, that there is a fire in you, there is an inheritance in you, there's a call of God on your life. You're going to have many assignments in life. You're going to do a lot of cool stuff, but the Lord says that he's going to use you to establish a plumb line. And I, and I, and I, and I believe that there is a, uh, that, that the Lord wants me to encourage you today because, because there's been dreams and desires that you've tried to close the book on. And I just feel like the Lord is just, is saying that he's not the one that killed those dreams. Those 
dreams are not dead. Those dreams are alive. You can't kill those dreams because those are God dreams that he planted within you. And so you can try to close the book. But I see like the wind of God just keeps blowing your book back open. It just keeps blowing the book back open. And it just keeps taking you back. And you're like, God, I can't do that. I can't go there. I don't think that's right. That, that's, the old, that's the old days. That's whatever. And the Lord just keeps blowing the book back open. He just keeps taking you to these promises, to these dreams, to these things that have been in your heart even since you were a little girl. There were things, even a little girl, where you told people, this is what I was going to do. This is who I am. This is what I'm going to do. And the Lord says, you were absolutely right. And so um, the Lord says, you've been faithful to deal with the hand that's been dealt to you. You were played some tricky cards and you stewarded those cards. You did what you, what, what you had to do. And yet I feel like the Lord says that he is actually, <laughs> by his grace, He's going to take you back to the future, meaning that you're not going back to the past, you're going to the future, but he's going to take you back into the, into the good instead of just kind of just cutting off everything, kind of just cutting off everything. The Lord says, no, there's great inheritance. There's great inheritance, a realm that you get to step into because what has been paid for you. So I just declare grace over you, Greta. I say grace. I say grace and peace be unto you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I just pray for just a fresh release of a fresh fire, a fresh anointing right now God there's a fresh anointing right now Father I pray Lord that you would loose her heart to dream again I pray that you would loose her lips to begin declaring again I see you prophesying even in your bedroom I see you just like declaring the word of the Lord I just I just see you declaring 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 and it's like the Lord's like you don't even need an audience because you have me so Father I thank you God for what you're doing in Greta in her life and Father I pray Lord I <laughs> Lord I, I pray Lord I I pray, Lord, that the lies of the enemy will be exposed in this season. Every lie exposed in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. Um, Carrie, I see you like a shepherd. I see a, a, a real shepherd's heart in you. I see that, um, that, that, that you think of yourself as the least likely that God would come to to reveal his goodness to you. But I just want to remind you that it was the shepherds that were keeping watch over their flock by night. Just these ordinary dudes, just these responsible dudes, they were just doing their job, keeping watch over their flock by night and God chose them to reveal his glory and the angels of the Lord came to the shepherds and said for unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior which is Christ the Lord and, and Carrie, I just hear the Lord saying I'm coming to you my shepherd I'm coming to you my shepherd I'm coming to reveal my glory to you I'm coming to reveal um, that it is for such a time as this and the Lord says just as I led the shepherds to the Christ I'm going to lead you into a fresh and intimate encounter with me and I just see this beautiful place of companionship between the two of you uh, the heart of a shepherd uh, 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 and the heart of a prophet working together in this place of harmony and, and mutual dependence and so I bless you I bless you and I bless the call of God on your life and I don't see that there is this this thing that, that people are going to try to pigeonhole you and be like this is how you this is what you have to do and this is what you have to look like and, 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 and all that jazz it's not about that at all you get to be fully you. You get to be fully you. You do not have to compromise on your identity. And people are going to say, my God, this is like a breath of fresh air. And I see um, unreligious people being open to the Christ because of this place of just you guys being fully you and fully surrendered to Christ. So we just bless you in Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. Yeah? Yeah, bless you, bud. Awesome. Thanks for coming up here. Yeah, I'm glad you came too. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, hey, can I pray for you guys? You want to come on up? You want to come on up, sweet? Let's just welcome them as they come. God's building an army, and this little princess is a little warrior. Buddy, have we met before? Uh, maybe briefly. What's your name? Owen. Owen, what's your daughter's name? Hadazah. Hadazah, come on over, you guys. Can I, I'm just going to pray for you, Hadazah. I love your hair. My hair used to be like that. This morning when I woke up, it looked like that. Guys, would you guys just go and stretch out your hands? Hadassah, you're awesome. We're just going to pray for you. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Fresh touch, Lord, right now. Yeah, fresh touch, Lord, right now. Come, Lord. Come, Jesus. Come, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this papa, Lord. I thank you for his daughter, Lord. And you're married as well? Yeah, what's your wife's name? Kylie. We just bless Kylie as well, Lord. 
Yeah, we bless her and we bless your baby right now. I say favor on you. I say favor on you. I say the favor of God on you. I see wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. I say wisdom and revelation and favor, 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 favor. Favor, 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 favor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You'll know what to do. You'll know what to say. You'll fear no evil, for he is with you. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. For wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor. I see you digging. I see the Lord giving you a shovel. He's going to show you where to dig. I see you digging a well. I see a, 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 a yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Like a water well. And, um, and, um, and the Lord's going to show you where to dig. And it's almost like every time you dig, you're going to strike water. There's a special anointing on your life to work with the Holy Spirit, to know where to apply yourself, to know where to dig the hole. And I just see water breaking forth from the ground. It's going to bring forth refreshing and nourishment. So, Father, I bless this man of God. I bless his family, Lord. I bless the, their dreams, their desires. I bless what you're stirring up. I say that no weapon formed against you can prosper, for the battle is the Lord and he will not fail. But yeah, you're going to need more fire, brother. So I just say fire on you right now. 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 More fire, God. More fire, God. More fire, God. Yes, Lord. Burn, Lord. Burn, Lord. Burn, Lord. Burn, Lord. Yep, yep, yep. Confidence. I declare confidence, courage, faith, faith, the faith of God, not just the faith in God, but the faith of God, yet burning, burning in your stomach, just the fire of God, just burning in your stomach. Lord, I just thank you, Father. I thank you. It's not heartburn, Lord, but it's his heart that is burning with passion and, 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 and for the things of God to be established. So brother, I just say, dig where he says to dig. Dig where he says to dig. And we just thank you, Lord, for the water that's going to seep up to the surface. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the favor of God. It's not going to be fair. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. God bless you, brother. You. Yeah, yeah. Did that make sense? All, all of it. Oh, good, good, good. Are you about to dig a hole or something? I think it's just, uh, we're just, just praying to God and asking you. Awesome. Us, yeah. That's good. Oh, good, good, I see it all, yeah, 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 and, and the fire is always good too, God bless you, thanks for letting me pray for you, all right, awesome, 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 Wayne, can I pray for you, you want to stay, stay there, come on, all right, let's do it, bud, come on up, bud, we don't do this normally, we're breaking, we're, we're breaking the, 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 what we normally do, so, come on, let's just welcome Wayne as he comes. Yeah, thank you, Father. Yeah, thank you, Father. Just, just invite Holy Spirit just to come right now. Thank you, Lord. 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 Take my hand. Thank you, Lord. 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 Yeah, Wayne, you've had a heart that's never wanted to be seen. You know, you're, you're, yeah. you've at times even tried to disappear. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the Lord says, I know right where you are, Wayne. I know right who you are. And I've called you. I've called you a son. I've called you a son. You are a son in whom I am well pleased. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for this son. I thank you, Father, for this anointing of sonship. Lord, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord. Lord, I just invite just your fresh fire just to come right now to touch my brother. Lord, I thank you for your fresh fire just to come right now. Yeah, yeah, burning him, burning him, burning him, burning him. Yeah, burn, 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 burn. Yeah, God, 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 yeah, God. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Lord. Lord. Come on, pray for him. Bless 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 him. I declare it's a new day. 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 I said it's a new day. I said it's a new day. Burn Lord. Burn Lord. Burn Lord. Burn Lord. Burn Lord. Burn Lord. It's a new day. It's a new day. All my promises are yes. Yes and amen. Yes. All my yes. promises are yes. yes and amen. The Lord says, all my yes. promises yes. are yes, yes. and amen. amen. Wayne, you got permission yes. to burn. You got permission oh, oh, oh. to burn. All, I, I declare the burn ban is yes. lifted. 
The yes. burn ban is lifted. Yes. Yep, yes. yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yes. Permission yes. to burn. Come on, bud. Come on. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand. Oh. Woo. Oh. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Come on, bud. Yes. Yeah. Woo. You look like you're ready to go. You look like you're ready to go. tried to take me out. Did he really? What happened? A lot. Diabetic thing. Okay. Blood sugar. Okay. 960. Whoa. It took me to the hospital. Wow. How long ago was that? Two months. Oh my gosh. Yep. Wow. Wow. You know, they wow. said I could never go do my business again, that my brain wouldn't work. They said you would not be able to go back to your business, that your brain wouldn't work. I got out in eight days. Eight. Thursday. Wow. Come on. It's Sunday. I'm in the church saying the devil's in hell. Yeah. Come on. 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 Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I was going to say, we got steps, or you can just, you know, yeah, come on. Wayne, you got permission to burn, dude. Just to let that up and out, man. It's going to be cool, bro. Come on. If you're watching online, you got permission to burn. Permission to burn. Father, I just thank you for each and every person online. I thank you for each and every person here. Lord, I ask, Father, just that a fresh militancy would be released. Lord, in our spirits, that there would be an urgency. And that we would not believe the enemy's lie that we are not important. That we would not believe the enemy's lie that this is, that this is, uh, that this is just some, something for someone else. I just go, that, that's a lie from the pit. This is not about someone else. Guys, this is about you. If you're watching online right now, this is about you. If you're here in this building right now, this is, it's about you. That God has called you for such a time as this. I just declare urgency, urgency, awakening, awakening, awakening. I said awakening to your identity awakening to your destiny listen if there's single people and there's hopelessness in your heart regarding um, uh, getting married or or a future and there's just a place of hopelessness we just declare hopelessness you are a demon and you are not of the holy spirit so we just say it like we see it hopelessness you are a demon and we say up and out right now to the pit right now to the pit right now hopelessness to the pit right now hopelessness to the pit right now right now right now right now right now out out I say out right now fire on you fire on you fire on you fire on you in Jesus name I declared Christ Jesus the hope of glory that is seated inside of you if it's a dream if it's a desire to be married again I bless that desire right now in Jesus I bless that desire in Jesus name I bless it right now and Father I pray Lord that all exploitation that the enemy's been able to exploit people we just we just thank you Father for the Holy Spirit to to discern it to displace it and to recalibrate our hearts right now in Jesus name I also see just like there's there's uh, somebody about um, you're you're looking at um, applying for bankruptcy and, um, and 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 you feel like there's no other way you feel like there's no other hope but you're looking at uh, maybe maybe filing for bankruptcy um, Father in Jesus name I pray Lord that you'd release strategy from heaven right now in Jesus name strategy from heaven and I pray that that this decision would not be made based off of hopelessness but God I pray Lord that your spirit of wisdom and revelation would come right now yep 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 Yep, 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 right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to provide a blueprint for w- to, to know what to do. And I pray, Lord, that they would be able to discern the pressure. Because I feel like this is like a generational financial thing that you've been born into. Maybe your parents um, filed for bankruptcy as well. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know that for sure. But I just declare the generational curse of poverty is being broken today. In Jesus' name. And that Jesus is going to give you hope and breakthrough for finances and prosperity. Why? Because we need an army that are not walking in poverty, but they're walking in selfless blessing so that we can be a blessing to cities and nations. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Last but not least, um, hold us in prayer. This week we're going to be meeting with um, a leader in the area that's very involved with uh, the uh, sexual trafficking and stuff that's happening uh, right in Seattle and on I-5. We're going to try to actually uh, live stream the conversation so that we can include our body in it. Um, but uh, uh, there's some really cool ministries that are doing some really cool things. And so we've, we've invested into the nations with uh, sex trafficking. We gave uh, $26,000 to the rescue of nine uh, children out of sex trafficking. 
Um, but this week, we're going to learn about what's happening here in Seattle, uh, uh, right here at the gateway. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that's happening even in our own harbor. So we're going to be learning about that so that we can get involved as a church. That'd be on Wednesday. So please be covering that in prayer. We'll also keep you uh, up to date with what's going to happen tomorrow night with the deliverance night. We'll see what happens with the snow and everything and with the roads Um, because it's going to start raining in about five minutes. So let's get you out of here. Father, thank you for this time this morning. Thank you for your spirit that's moving in this place, in this house. Father, we thank you, Lord, for 228. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to be doing on February 28th here at Seattle Revival Center. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your dream and your desire that there would be a company of righteous ones that love mercy, do justice, and walk humbly before God. And that is our desire and prayer for Seattle Revival Center and for this great region in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Hey, God bless you guys. God bless you online. We'll be back in person here next week. Take care. SRC. So good to have you here with us today. These are a couple things happening this month in February. Something new and exciting happening on February 28th. We've got our 6 p.m. evening service launch. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we're going to be having an evening service every Sunday. So we've got literally three services every Sunday that are going to start happening. Three services one Revival Center. Um, so we just encourage you to come out to experience an evening service here at SRC. Again, that's going to be starting February 28th. I wanted to highlight one of the teams uh, that we're going to need some leads for that in our children's ministry. Uh, so to tell us a little bit more about that is Emily McIntyre, our children's ministry coordinator. Hi guys, I'm Emily McIntyre. I'm the Children's Ministries Coordinator here at Seattle Revival Center and I have an exciting announcement for you guys. We have had over 50 kids at the 11 o'clock service the last two Sundays and we are growing and it's getting so fun and exciting, but we really need some more teachers downstairs to help with the kids. If you would like to join our awesome team, um, please let me know. Again, these are paid positions. So if you're looking to make a little bit of extra money and you enjoy hanging out with the kids, uh, we would love to talk to you. We especially have a big need for our evening service that we're gonna be launching. Um, And we're gonna be doing some really fun stuff with the kids during that service time where we're going to be talking about prophecy and um, doing prophetic art and really exploring with the kids and learning more about God and his nature and how he interacts with us and how we can partner with him um, with the kids so that we can have, you know, a little, little army of world changers down there. So we'd love to have you join us. Registration is now open for Activation School. Uh, So this is a great opportunity to learn more about our church, our mission, um, our culture here at SRC. It's taught by the leaders and pastors here in this house. And so we'd really encourage you, if you wanna uh, start putting down roots and start learning more and building relationship into your community, um, we just encourage you to check out more information about that and to sign up as soon as you can. Uh, The first class date begins on February 28th. Also, we have a lot of other things happening in the month of February, so you're going to want to check them out by visiting our website at seattlerevivalcenter.com.